In Jurassic Park 3, you see Billy Brennan rescue Eric Kirby with his dinosaur paraglider. And shortly after he does so, he falls into the water and gets viciously attacked and nearly killed by a group of Jurassic Park 3 pteranodons. They relentlessly attack him as he continues to float down river and the river gets more and more rapid. And this is the last we see of Billy Brennan. So what actually happened to him? How did he escape the Avery cage? And what happens to him after the events of Jurassic Park 3? He seemingly disappears. Well, I have all them answers in today's video and believe you me you're not going to want to miss a single bit of this so get ready. Now Billy Brennan was a young associate professor in paleontology and the site manager for Dr. Alan Grant's new dig site at Fort Peck Lake in Montana. And as we know he travelled to Isla Sauna with Dr. Grant, the magnificent Kirby's and their team of mercenaries. But was double crossed and was just literally there to rescue their son Eric Kirby. And as we know they come into contact with the Spinosaurus, the infamous raptor pack and this is where Billy really shows his true character because he takes a calculated risk of putting himself in danger to fund the dig site by stealing Velociraptor eggs. This basically leads the Velociraptors to follow him throughout Jurassic Park 3. Even though he has good intentions to fund Dr. Grant's dig site, Dr. Grant finds out and completely disowns Billy. And this is where the story gets extremely interesting, because Billy wants to redeem himself in Dr. Alan Grant's eyes, so decides to rescue Eric Kirby from the pteranodons in the birdcage. He buckles himself up, soars in his paraglider and rescues Eric Kirby, and as he does so he risks his own life to do so. As he serves Eric Kirby, he gets himself caught on the rocks, and this is where he has to make a massive decision, either stay there, get pecked to death, or fall to the water below. He falls to the water below, and this is where the pteranodons descend upon him, scratching him, clawing at him, keeping him below water, as he continues racing down river. But just before he does that, he beckons to the others to tell them to leave and leave him behind and save themselves. And that's really the last we see of Billy Brennan. Now, as we know, that birdcage was super enclosed and there were only really two ways out of it, the door and underneath the grate, not the way Billy was going. So first things first, how did Billy actually escape the Avery? And secondly, where was he during the events of Jurassic World? That's something we'll come back to later. Let's solve how we actually escaped the Avery first, because this video does get pretty wild towards the end. Because let's not forget, we see Billy miraculously alive at the end of Jurassic Park 3 with no explanation given how he escaped the birdcage or how he's even alive. Now in the original Jurassic Park 3 script, it was intended for Billy to actually perish in the Avery scene in the river, because if you look closely at this scene here, you can see a massive pool of blood where the Pteranodons continue to attack him. That amount of blood would signify an extreme injury, even death in the water. Now, as we know, Jurassic Park 3 was being written as it was being filmed, so they decided to scrap Billy Brennan dying and actually decided to bring him back, even though that was super puzzling for fans on screen. Now, don't get me wrong, it was a great redemption arc for Billy, because you see him at the end reunite with Alan Grant, he gives him his hat back, which he miraculously somehow saved, even though he could barely save himself. It was a touching moment between Dr. Grant and Billy. But from a storytelling perspective, it makes no sense at all. So what actually happened then? Now one could argue and even say that Billy escaped the birdcage exactly the same way as the cast did, just at a different end, where the cast obviously went under a grate under the birdcage, Billy could have done the same thing, it makes sense, right? He's in a river, they were in a river, they went under the grate, he went under the grate. Well, not really, because Billy actually heads towards a different direction than the way the actual cast go, meaning he exited the Avery at a different location. Now looking at all Isla Sona maps, you can clearly see where the birdcage would be and there was clearly only one way to the ocean. There is no other way to the ocean from that birdcage. And as we know, the cast actually went the way of the ocean. They went on their boat with the Spinosaurus, yada yada yada. So we would assume that Billy Brennan went the other way, which wouldn't lead to the ocean. And why is leading to the ocean important? Well, if you think back, the military actually arrived via a beach and the ocean. So we would assume that Billy Brennan would be transported via the river to the ocean slash beach and get rescued by the military because we see him on that helicopter at the end and his injuries are so extensive that he can barely talk or even move. So the likelihood is he is not getting out of that river and is not traipsing around the jungles of Isla Sauna. The marines would have had to rescue him by the breach because we also know the marines do not make their way inland. They just land in when they rescue the rest of the crew. So although it says in movie he was clearly rescued by the marines which we can see on the end scene, the way he goes downstream by the pteranodons escapes the boot 
food cage just doesn't make sense. Now, granted, the producers didn't think they'd have someone like Shadows dissecting every single scene of the Jurassic Park franchise, but even so, it just left a lot of viewers puzzled as to how he exited that birdcage. So we're going to have to assume he did somehow miraculously float down the same way Dr. Grant and the Kirbys exited the birdcage, which again doesn't make sense because we don't see that on screen. So the only logical explanation is he floated under the grate, which was exactly the same way the cast went, floated downstream, hit the beach, and was rescued by the Marines. But then somehow he mysteriously disappears for the next several films. Although he was planned to be in them, and I mean 100% in them, where the actor even agreed to appear. And the storyline in itself is just simply nuts. Now, I'm pretty sure you all would have heard of a game called Trespasser. It's a 1998 action-adventure video game developed by DreamWorks. It had Richard Attenborough on board as John Hammond replies in his role, and even Spielberg was involved in this production. Now, this game actually planned a sequel around 2012, as Steven Spielberg was prepared to revive the Jurassic Park franchise. He contacted Blakely to prepare concepts for a new video game and the sequel to Trespasser. This featured as the main protagonist, Billy Brennan. Now, things from here get pretty wild with the storyline, but just before I explain that, the title to this new video game, along with Billy in it, was actually going to be called Jurassic World. What a coincidence. In which the dinosaurs from Isla Sauna escaped and forced humans to reevaluate their place in the world. But due to management change at Universal Pictures, the entire game project and Billy was cancelled, and the producer, Blakely, had to turn all the assets over to Fry McMarshall, who then adapted this into Jurassic World. And this is where things get extremely interesting for Billy. Because like I said, Billy was meant to be the protagonist of Jurassic World, but was later replaced by Owen. Now, many things were changed, so it's not a one-for-one -one replacement, because the storyline in itself for the original Jurassic World, with Billy in it, was completely different. It was set on Isla Sauna, and Billy was basically going to befriend the raptors of Jurassic Park 3, much like Owen does with his raptor pack. But it's a lot more complicated than that, because Billy is basically brought to Isla Sauna with the military, because the military basically are now involved because these dinosaurs from Isla Sauna escape into the mainland, killing people, and they want to wipe them out, but they need a guide for Isla Sauna. So they basically cook up a story that they're going to save the dinosaurs, get Billy involved, and then when they get it, all hell breaks loose. They start guns ablazing, mowing down dinosaurs, which Billy doesn't agree with. Where he decides to run off into the jungle, but gets chased by two mercenaries with shotguns. These mercenaries are firing shots at him, but missing, and lo and behold, they run into a raptor's nest, just like in Jurassic Park 3. Cut along long story short, the eggs get disturbed, Brennan ends up with a shotgun, and instead of shooting the two mercenaries, he kind of like sprays the shotgun away from them and shouting at them to run away, get away, get away. The mercenaries retreat because they see a female velociraptor, a very blue female velociraptor, extremely intelligent and basically thinks that Billy was saving her eggs, and thus they form a bond, he becomes part of the raptor pack, yada yada yada. Now what is extremely interesting in this adaption is the fact that the velociraptor was called Blue. The title was called Jurassic Park, and they repurposed all of this for the 2015 Jurassic World film. Now, Billy was basically going to go on to save the day with his raptor pack and show that these animals are much more than to just be exterminated, and would have been a fascinating storyline in itself, even if it had been before Jurassic World, set after the events of Jurassic Park 3, would have been great, would have shown a build-up to how Owen was training these other raptors to be kind of military animalized weapons. But alas, the game was cancelled, and they adapted the game into this Jurassic World film we have now, which, in my eyes, I don't mind Jurassic World. But it would have given a lot more lore into the Jurassic Park franchise, and Billy would have gone on to be some type of hero slash new Owen Grady. Unfortunately, though, all this is non-canon and doesn't really even exist in the universe. All we have, the last iteration slash entry for Billy, was him leaving on that helicopter with the military. So not only did they do him a dirty in Jurassic Park 3 with the Avery scene, they then do him a dirty at the end, and then further do him another dirty by not including him in the Jurassic World film. I feel sorry for Billy. So as to what actually happens to him after the events of Jurassic Park 3, you could speculate all day, but we have no concrete evidence. Only what I've told you about the cancelled Trespasser 2 game, which was adapted into Jurassic World. I'd be very interested to hear your thoughts on this original Jurassic World game and how you think of the story and Billy himself. What do you think actually happened to him after the events of Jurassic Park 3? And do you like how he actually was portrayed to escape the Avery? Let me know in the comments below. But this does pose another question though. Where was the Spinosaurus during the events of the Lost World? If it was on his Lasona during Jurassic Park 3, where was it during the Lost World? And why did it follow the humans everywhere? I have the answer to all them questions on my channel, go check it out.
out now. Can I solve all Jurassic Park related mysteries? You bet Jurassic can. I'd like to thank my YouTube members as always. Thanks guys, your names are on the screen now. And you keep the lights on in this park. I'm Shadows, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.